This is an interesting question. It starts with x, y is not zero, which is just the GMAT's way of saying that neither x nor y is zero. And they want to know whether x cubed plus y cubed is positive. So I'm starting to think, well, under what circumstances would x cubed plus y cubed be positive, And under what circumstances would it not be positive? Now, if x and y are both positive, then x cubed and y cubed would both be positive. So that's a definite yes. If x and y are both negative, then x cubed and y cubed would both be negative, and that would lead us to a definite no, because the sum of two negative numbers is not greater than zero. So the only case that would be a bit more interesting is if one of them is positive and the other is negative, and so I'm thinking, well, if the positive one is farther away from zero than the negative one is, then when you cube them, the positive one will still be farther away from zero than the negative one is. Even if they're fractions, the fraction that is farther away from zero will still be farther away from zero when you cube both of them. So it's safe to say that if the positive one is farther from zero than the negative one, that would lead to a yes. If the negative one is farther away from zero than the positive one, that would lead to a no. Now I think I'll start with statement two. It seems a bit easier to evaluate, but I'll do that right after the intro. Statement two is just the GMAT's way of telling us that x and y are both on the same side of zero. They're either both positive or both negative. But as I mentioned before the intro, those would lead to different answers. If they're both positive, we'd get a definite yes. If they're both negative, we'll get a definite no. And I don't know which of those is the truth. I don't know if they're both positive or both negative. So statement two is not sufficient on its own and we should eliminate the answer choices that claim that it is. So B and D are gone, and we're down to A, C, E. Now statement one tells us that X plus Y is positive, and that would only happen if they're both positive, or if one of them is positive and the other is negative, such that the positive one is farther away from zero than the negative one. But if you recall what we discussed before the intro, That is sufficient, as long as they're either both positive or at least the positive one is farther from zero than the negative one, those scenarios will all lead to a definitive yes. X cubed plus Y cubed is positive. And so statement one is sufficient on its own and the correct answer is A. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.